Let's do an example. I want to do a demo here of um, how the chi-squared test for goodness of fit works in a f simple and fairly standard uh, example. I'm not going to go through the, all the mechanics of the test, but I want to show you uh, what happens using a simulation. So this is using Fathom, and I've modified uh, one of their um, worksheets, one of their uh, demos from 50 Fathoms. Um, so we've got a test die and we're going to roll it 108 times and we're going to try and see if it's fair. And then what I want to do is compare it to what would happen if I roll um, a fair die 108 times. And um, what we'd like to do is get something where I just have to do this one thing, test, roll the die a certain pretty decent number of times, in this case 108, um, and then to see if, the, if I can tell just from that whether it's fair. But in order to demonstrate why the chi-squared test might be useful for that, I want to actually imagine doing the 108 roll test over and over and over and over again. It's the idea of the sampling distribution again. Don't just do the test you're going to do once. Imagine doing it many, many, many times. And even let's maybe do it many, many times in simulation to get an idea of what's going to happen um, in general. Okay, so what's, what's going on here is um, we've got... Uh, it's randomly rolled this die, and it's not a fair die. We'll just give it away right now. It's not. Uh, it's not a fair die, and uh, they say them, but I'm just thinking of it as like one die rolled 108 times. But it's not a fair die. Um, and when we roll it, we're just going to keep getting different results. And we could just kind of look at this and say, okay, 108 rolls. Hmm, anything weird? 108 rolls. Anything weird? Do you notice any kind of pattern here? Do we notice anything that suggests some numbers are more likely to come up with than others? That's a pretty good one, actually. Um, and you might be starting to see a pattern there. Or, now, with fair dice, of course, you don't always get exactly the same number of 1, 2, 3, 4, five. you don't, it's random. But the difference between the actual number of 1, say, and the expected number of 1s, which is 1 sixth of the total, which is going to be 18, shouldn't be great. It shouldn't be that big very often, okay? Whereas here, it's looking like sometimes, wow, you get a lot of fours and very few ones, very few fives, very few threes. Hmm, that's interesting, okay? So what do we do with that? Okay, so what the what I've had asked the program to do is for each of, I think I had this do it about 50, 55 times, something like that, let's see. Yeah, 55 times. I did 55 sets of 108 rolls. In each case, it calculated the chi-square st statistic. Now, what that is, is you just look at each of the possibilities, six possibilities. You look at the observed, so in this case, for the ones, that would be seven ones. You subtract that from the expected, that's 108 over 6, which is 18. Um, and so you take the 7 minus 18 and square it, and then divide it by the 18. Turns out that that's the right way to kind of account for the fact that when you have more and more counts in one category, you actually expect a certain amount more variation. And it's not that surprising if it was like 100 versus 110. That would be less surprising versus 1 versus 11, for example. Okay. And uh, I might talk about exactly why it's squared on top and not squared on the bottom. It has to do with the root n pq and the, the ubiquitous root n that we see throughout statistics. Okay, but it turns out this is a good measure. Okay, so here's what happens when you do that. You calculate all these 55 different versions of chi-square, and you look at, and we get this kind of distribution. This is essentially this is a sampling distribution. Not of a mean, not of a, pro, of a percentage, but of a new thing, of a measure of difference from uniformity, basically, or a measure of difference from what you expected. In this case, the expected happens to be uniform. Okay, so uh, sometimes we get as little as 5 for this number. Sometimes we get um, as big as almost 30. And of course, if we ha don't know what happens for a fair die, we have really no idea what information this gives us. So I did it for a fair die as well. I actually had, I wanted to get a fair, fairly good uh, idea of the distribution, so I had it do it 200 times. And we might do it a little bit more live in a minute. And this is what we get for the distribution from a fair die. Okay. Notice what happens is it's very likely to get, unlikely to get very close to zero. That's just measuring the fact, it's reflecting the fact that you're not going to get an equal number very often. In fact, if you roll 108 times and you get exactly 18 ones, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes, somebody's messing with you. Very unlikely. But it's also very unlikely to get numbers for this chi-square statistic 
the observed minus expected squared over expected, the sum of that, it's very unlikely to get at bigger numbers bigger than 20. As it turns out, this is new information. We didn't really know this. But the, the uh, simulation is telling us that it should be clustered, well, it looks like clustered around 3, and it's got a fairly long tail. Um, it's not a symmetrical distribution, but it's probably unlikely to get something bigger than 20. Well, guess what? This, uh, this, this die, our test die, is often giving us numbers bigger than 20. Okay, and so that is definitely a suggestion that this really was unfair. Okay, I just wanted to give you the theoretical uh, const construct. If I did this a million times, this dot plot would end up being one of these shapes. It would be eh, actually it would be in between the blue and the purple if you could tell the colors, um, because the the degrees of freedom here is uh, n minus one, so it'd be five. So it'd be something uh, in between the blue and the purple curves. I got this from Wikipedia. And indeed, it'd be something that would be peaking uh, right at 3. The mode was actually at 3. The book mentions that the mode of the chi-square is right at the degrees of freedom minus 2. Um, and so this is giving us an idea of what we would expect from a fair die. Okay? We could go ahead and do a few more if we want. Uh, I don't want to do that many more. Maybe I could just add 24, 25. And what you'll see is it's re, it's re-rolling the dice, the fair die, and it added to this picture, but it didn't change it dr dramatically. It's still peaking right around three. It still has a bit of a tail, but it's not giving us that much uh, up above twenty. Okay. Whereas here, if I add a few measures here, let's say twenty-five, it's re-rolling this unfair die. It's giving us more stuff. A lot of the time, it's giving us numbers that are quite a bit bigger. Now, this isn't what we would do for a chi-square test for this die, unless we had a heck of a lot of time on our hands to roll the die. We would want to do it just from one of these rolls, okay? But what we're going to get is just one dot on this dot plot, okay? So if we're unlucky, we would get this dot or this dot or this dot, it's one of these dots, and we would get something where it happens to actually even out pretty well. And the difference between the observed and the expected is not very big on average. Um, and it would, it would be a dot that would actually fit in very well with this di distribution, and we wouldn't notice. But most of the time, we're going to get something like in here. We're going to get 15. We're going to get 20. We might even get up towards 25. Those guys are clearly unusual values for a chi-square statistic if the die is fair. And so most of the time, if we roll this die, and we do the chi-square, just get this one of these numbers, like this, uh, well, this 25 is a little extreme, but say we get the 15.8. We can look at this plot, or more particularly, we can look at this distribution, and we say, well, we're way out here on something between the blue and the purple curve. So imagine, let's say, the purple curve. That's gone down pretty far by the time you get to 15. The area from there off to the right, which is the same kind of thing we do um, to calculate the p-value, is going to be pretty small. Anyway, that's a demonstration of, of one case where it's going to help us.